Good morning, folks. We're coming about two hours late today because we released Dr. Brian Tinsley's solar forcing talk from the conference this morning. We'll come back to that in a moment, but first let's go to spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star was pretty calm, except for the filament dancing you saw in the red 304 angstrom shots in the opening. No flares or CMEs, but we do have an active region born just this morning on the disk, already on its way out, however, as it begins to develop. Solar wind here. Slight variability offers the idea that both of the small CMEs have swept by, spread enough to avoid multiple impact concerns, and now we just await the coronal hole streams, due about any time. If you caught the blue phi angle in the top solar wind panel a moment ago, we also have an excess magnitude earthquake warning for when that phi angle finally flips down to 180. Up next, it's the weather. That storm bombed out. Dropped to hurricane force low pressure and using moisture drawn in from the Gulf of Mexico, drilled the center of the country with blizzard conditions. It did get deadly. People are stranded on highways, and the cold and snow records will continue to walk the plank as the storm charges through the Midwest and towards the eastern states tonight. Interesting paper out about the radiation dose to airplanes in the September 2017 major solar flares. While the total dose radiation was only about 10% of the scary levels, total dose is only one of the concerns from cosmic energy. The other just takes one particle. A cosmic ray nucleus, the cascading muons and neutrons, those indeed have the ability to break DNA. This is different from organ failure due to total dose, and it can begin cancerous processes, again, with just one particle. There's a reason most of you have the Disaster Prediction app already. It is the only space weather health alerts on Earth. It's got all the normal space weather alerts in real time, as well as the earthquake information, too. I want to quickly hit this Comet Impactor story from UCSB. They want to put evidence of an impactor 12,000 years ago or so, having found it in southern Chile. Now first, they have to use the fragmented impactor idea because the Younger Dryas impactor boundary field is here. No way to blame the Greenland event for strewn material in southern Chile. While their explanation covers the radioactive particles, wildfires, and extinction of species, it does ignore the character of the disaster on the opposite side of the world at that time. It cannot satisfy a cycle, which we know is tied to the disaster, and it cannot cause a geomagnetic reversal, which also follows the disasters. Can't leave out the sun. Last but not least, forgive my calling these professors' claims audacious, but the prime cam on Subaru caught this little blip way in the distance, the red dot next to a foreground star in yellow. That little red dot, they say, is unquestionably this. I mean, it could be, but it's just a few pixels of red smudge. Folks, as I mentioned, Dr. Tinsley's video is out. For those who know, he showed up despite recent heart surgery and managed to wow everyone from his chair. You know why I'm hoping you can go, watch, like, and leave a nice comment for Dr. Tinsley, thanking him for his time and effort, both at the conference and for making solar forcing and global electric circuit science a reality throughout his career. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.